Hi, beautiful writers. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I'm going to be discussing writing wines. That's W-H-I-N-E-S. And you know, I decided to do this because I was supposed to be last weekend in a fabulous wine tasting weekend. We had it all booked. It was in Santa Barbara. We were going with our wine tasting friends and we were just all ready for a fabulous weekend. Except our state shut down um, again. Hmm. So no wineries were open. <sighs> no mini vacation. I really need one. Anyway, I decided to discuss writing wines. They kind of go together. And I personally like whining about writing. Don't judge, we writers have a lot to whine about. So I poured myself some wine and I'm going to be drinking it throughout because yeah, you know, wine, it goes with wine. Here are my 24 personal favorite wines. One, lack of writing time. Children, grandchildren, children, grandchildren, jobs, errands, chores, other jobs, life. Can a writer squeeze in a little time? Sometimes it's really, really tough. I always feel like I don't have enough time to write. And sometimes I have all day, but then I try to get all this other stuff done. Never works. Number two, my muse is MIA. Where is she? I have the time. She's gone. She's missing. But you know what? I sit down and write because chances are she will show up about the time that I am in the writing zone. That's when she puts an appearance. Number three, technology troubles. Okay, this definitely needs wine because if I'm having tech troubles, <clears throat> I need wine. Mm, I need wine. What I discovered about Techno Troubles is there's a few things you can do that will alleviate about 99.9% .9 of the problems. One is refresh the page. Two is turn the tech off and on. Three, clear the browser. Four, update the browser. Five, don't use that browser for that platform. It's worked for me most of the time. Number four, platform or brand building is a really, really steep learning curve. So steep. Sometimes it's, I feel like it's years. Um, and each one, each platform has its own little tricks. Most of the people that I know that are in my, my little circle don't use all my platforms. They might be on Instagram or they might be on Twitter, but they never seem to be on all of them. So I actually have to use Google, I'll Google, how do I do this, how do I do that? I'll usually find the answer. Number five, writing wine is a lack of blogging topics. I have found, because I've been blogging for years and years and years and years and years, I have found that if I just kind of peruse Facebook groups, I will usually come up with a whole lot of different blogging topics just from what people are, you know, discussing at the moment. Number six, social media snafus. What do you mean I can't delete that? <laughs> My advice is when you're on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, is take it slow. I am usually on social media on my phone. I'm either on the go or I'm multitasking. And I guess my fingers are like super fat or something. It doesn't matter which way I hold the phone. So it takes me usually a couple tries to make sure that I've spelled things correctly. And I always check and recheck because it always seems like there's a typo or I've used the wrong tone or what I said the tone just seemed not the tone I wanted to convey. So take it slow on social media. Slow down and reread whatever you post before you hit that post button. Number seven is plot problems. For me, I find the best thing to do is to, is to step away, to think, to just like let my mind wander. And sometimes the plot problem isn't a problem so much it is that my brain is like in cold brain mode, not hot brain mode. 
and I kind of discuss my three brains in another video. And if it's not in hot brain mode, then it seems like everything takes longer to figure out. So a problem that I had in the evening or at 10 o'clock at night magically appears to me in the morning. I was like, oh, that's, that's the answer to that. Number eight, editorial issues. This is a great wine. So your editor comes back with the recommended, recommended changes. Some will be tough to execute. Some just have you scratching your head. Some just, you're just like, I don't get it, but I'll do it anyway. But you have to do it. And sometimes they, these take a while. And the, the, the tougher they are, the more you just have to step back. I never, I never handle um, anything from my editor that day. I always think about it a lot, unless it's like super easy. But if it's a tougher thing that I have to like to mold, then I step away for about a day, come back, and I've my brain has had like a chance to like figure it out. Number nine is web wandering. Guilty as charged. Remember your lack of writing time? Yeah, that. So it's something I battle all the time. I just get, I'm looking at something, then I'm looking at something else, and then a half hour went by. Or I check Instagram, and then I'm checking something else, and I'm checking something else, and another half hour went by. Bad me, no, I need to do the writing. So web wandering, definitely it is our, our constant whine because we can't help ourselves. <laughs> Finding great beta readers. I didn't have any for the longest time, honestly. It, I think it takes a while. And not all beta readers are good beta readers. You want beta readers who are actually going to give you valuable advice, who tell you how you need to improve upon your novel. I had one beta reader in the very, very beginning, and she was a, an excellent author and did all the Harlequin things. And she looked at it and she basically worked through five pages with me and it went, mind blown. I'm like, oh, this is what I need to do. Anybody else would have said, hey, that's great. She was honest and she showed me what exactly, how I exactly needed to tighten those sentences and what exactly I needed to do. And I did it. So gush, a beta reader who all they do is gush about your work, that's great. But if that's all they do, um, that's not helping you improve, is it? Finding effective critique groups. Kind of like beta readers. I think they're hard to find. You can find some on the internet. Maybe you have a local group that's really great. I know a lot of people have a lot of luck with critique groups. But once again, you need to find a critique group of people who know their stuff. That to me, I see is the biggest problem with a lot of critique groups is there's too many people who don't know their stuff. And so then, you have too many different levels of authors. If you find a, an author, like you need somebody who really knows the art of fiction, the art of telling a story to help you in your journey to write a better story. And my advice is never accept criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. I heard that somewhere and I liked it. Another writing wine is troll-like reviews. We already discussed how I don't look at my re reviews, but if I were to, but I don't, or some other person who was trolling me, here's my three words of advice. Do not engage. Don't do it. Another writing line is self-publishing headaches. Uh, that could be about a million blogs in itself, right? Things like cover art, editing, formatting, coding. I have a formatter. And they also manage my website. If I have an issue, they will take, you know, they will handle it. That way I have time to do what I love best, which is write. But once again, not everybody can afford that or they like to do it themselves. But it's still, you know, for me, that's one alleviation of a headache. Self-publishing scams. Writers, they fall for them all the time. Rule one, if they want your money, it's a vanity press. They take your money, they can take your copyrights and all of that and wave bye-bye to you and you have very little, very little control. Don't do it, you're better off self-publishing. Another writing wine is Facebook face-offs. Once again, those magic three words, 
do not engage. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Another writing line is crafting a query. When I first did it, it took weeks, like, like not a two weeks, like three or four weeks. And it was, I rewrote it and rewrote it and revised. And guess what? It still sucked. <laughs> I had all the examples. I just didn't, couldn't get it. Ah! I need more wine just remembering that. Ask someone who has written a successful query. And by successful query, I mean someone who got an agent <laughs> from that query. Let them critique it if you can and take their advice. That's what you need to do. Have them read it and take their advice. I did this for someone and they did not take my advice, insisted that they did not need to do the thing I told them they needed to do. Really, then why did you bother asking me? I don't understand, okay? If you have someone who's done that, please take their advice. Please, please. The next writing line is the agent quest. It takes time to figure out who to send it to, what agents you need to send to. I use Publishers Marketplace, I think there's a small fee, and a few others which I've linked down below. It takes a long time, don't rush this step. I made a spreadsheet, it had their name and their what they, what they wanted, in particular the web address, what their specialty was. It took a lot of time, but that's part of agent searching. The links are going to be the below. The next writing line is coping with rejection. Plan on it. Plan on 99.9% .9 of rejection. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's just, that's just the way it is. On a good note, know that you, if you're doing it, it takes courage. And courage is knowing that you're gonna fail or the chances are high that you will fail, but you do it anyway. So that should make you feel pretty good. Number 20 is the expense to attend a writer's conference. A good, a good one is really well worth the money. And I know it's not just the conference, it's the conference, it's the hotel, it's the flight there, the food, you know, sometimes they only offer one meal or two meals. But a great conference is worth its weight in gold for pitching, for having agents and editors uh, read your five pages, for build, for networking, for meeting new writer friends. Um, my favorite was the San Francisco Writers Conference. I think it was like the third or fourth I had attended. And it was by far, it was just so much fabulous information. It was wonderful and I, I, I always recommend it. Then when you go and you spend that money for the Writers Conference, fill your day with the workshops. Okay, I knew people, we'd, we'd be waiting in line, I'm like, oh, how many, you know, it would be like one o'clock, oh, how many workshops have you been to? Two, I mean, the workshops are anywhere from like 20 minutes to an hour, I'm like two o'clock, like, well, I got up late, and then I went to breakfast, and then I had my coffee. You're here for the writer's conference, pack it in. Don't, don't sleep or hide in your room. Okay, there's one exception to hiding in your room. Sometimes in that middle of the conference, you get total like overload of information and, and news that you just didn't really want to hear. It's go, it's, I'm going to give you permission to go upstairs to your room and cry, but only for five minutes. Then you're going to, you know, put your lipstick on and straighten your shirt and march down there and learn some stuff. Another writing line is the cost of having your book professionally critiqued and or edited. It costs big. Some offer it for free. Be careful what you, you know, what you know what they say about free things, okay? Sometimes you have to be selected, like they'll, they'll do it for free, but you have to be in this big selection pile. Um, if you can afford it and you go to that conference and they have like a critique or editing session, I re highly recommend doing that. Usually it's not very much and um, definitely worth its weight in gold. I, I did that when I had a chance a few times and I also paid for the big time critique from a New York Times notable who went through the whole manuscript, actually it was the Emperor's Assassin, and they concentrated on the first 50 pages and they wrote me 10 pages of single spaced notes. Woo. Okay, it was extremely helpful. It, it got me the agent. I think my cleaning up that manuscript got me the agent. 
but I've also been in smaller conferences and where you just paid like the $10 or I don't even, it could have been even free. I don't remember. Um, and I was waiting around, we we're kind of waiting around for the different agents and they asked me who I was seeing and I told them and they're like, oh no, he's so mean. He will crush your soul. I'm thinking, oh yeah, gee, thanks. Oh, soul crushing. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Mm. Anyway, I went in and he had already pre-read the manuscript, you know, I think it was five pages. So he had already pre-read that earlier because you sent it in earlier and he loved it. He only said good things about it. He said it was obvious that I could write. He said it was refreshing. Yay, score me. He did say it needed tightening. It took me a little bit to figure out what tightening actually meant. But I, I was happy. I, it gave me hope. Book sales are another writing wine, or rather the lack of them. Here's my suggestion. Make new reader friends and engage in a non-pushy way on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And in a non-pushy way, I just mean make comments on people's posts. Um, you can go to famous authors and they're usually, they'll post something and people will comment and you can comment on their comment. It's non-pushy. If they want to see you all, who you are, they're, they're going to go look at your page. So you're making comments, you're engaging, but you're not saying, buy my book, buy my book, which nobody likes. Nobody likes that. Another writing wine is Amazon algorithms. Oh, you know, that needs more wine. No, seriously, more wine. I really think they just constantly change. I, I don't have proof. I don't know if anybody really has proof. It's like God, like they work in mysterious ways. But I think a lot of times they change things up because people are quick to game the system and they don't want people gaming the system. Um, so who knows? I have no, I have no clue how they work. I, really no clue. The last writing wine is the magical, magical, mysterious world of publishing. <sighs> This is just like a catch-all. Why did their book get chosen and yours didn't? Who knows? I don't know. So much of it is luck and timing. Yes, skill definitely involved. But also you can have all the skill, but you also need luck and you also need timing. Say that to yourself, luck and timing. And I don't know if you can buy that. I just know you can keep plugging along. So that's it, 24 <laughs> writing wines. We have a lot to whine about, but before you uncork that bottle of wine and indulge in some sour grapes of wrath, remember how very fortunate we are and you are to have found your passion in life. That's awesome. That's worth celebrating. Most people never find their passion. Hurdles make us stronger. Rejection makes us more courageous and writing woes makes us more determined. At least I hope they do. Did I leave out your favorite writing wine? If so, drop me a note and let me know. What is your favorite writing wine? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe and notify button. And remember, writers, dream, create, embrace. Bye-bye.